So what does it actually mean to write in key? Do you need to know music theory to be able to do it? And why does it actually matter? Now, this idea intimidated me for a long time when I started making electronic music, but I promise you, regardless of where you're starting from today, after this video, you are gonna be able to say that you can write music in key. So let's dive in. Hey, how's it going guys? It's John Holt here from The Audio Journey, helping make music production accessible to all. And here on this channel, what I do is a variety of music production tutorials, mainly focused towards beginners and beyond. So if that's something that you might be interested in, then definitely consider subscribing. And in addition to this channel, I also run a Facebook group called Music Production Explained. Now, in this group, I'm active every single day to answer your questions. And I also go live to do a Q&A every single week, which you can pre-submit questions to and then catch the replay if you can't join us live. But this is just to get your questions answered nice and quickly when you're getting started with music production. So if that sounds like it might be helpful to you, then there's a link in the description below for you to go ahead and check that out. So let's dive straight into the nuts and bolts of this topic and answer the question of what does it mean to write in key? Why does it matter? And then how can I do it? So to understand what writing in key means, let's define what a key is. A key is a set of notes and chords that sound good together and give a certain flavor. One more time, a key is a set of notes and chords that sound good together and give a certain flavor. So of these 12 notes that we have to use from C, all the way back up to this next C, all of these notes that we have in the middle here, uh, these 12 notes, um, a key is typically a set of about eight notes um, that you can use to write bass lines, chords, melodies, and you only use that set of eight notes to write in key. If you use notes that are outside of those eight notes, um, then you're gonna be writing out of key and it's gonna sound a little bit funky. So it's just picking a set of notes and using those for everything that you write. Let's solidify that with an example. So an example of a key is the key of C major. Um, so C major is the easiest one to remember because all of the notes that are in the key of C major are just the white notes on the piano keyboard. So C, D, E, F, G, A, and B, all of these white notes here are in the key of C major. All of the black notes, the sharps and flats up here, are not in the key of C major. So if we wanted to write a bass line, we could use these white notes, but if we started using F sharp, or we started using B flat, then we're gonna be writing out of key and it's gonna sound a little bit weird. So I just told you that C major is a key, and I told you that all of these white notes are in the key of C major. So the way that we find out what notes we're allowed to use is by breaking down uh, C major. So let's do that. Um, C. Um, which is what we start with. C is the place that we start on the piano keyboard to find the notes that we're allowed to use. So uh, that's called the root note. And um, so C is the root note of C major. Uh, so we start here and then the second section major tells us what notes are in that scale. It gives us a set of rules that determine what notes are in that key. And the rules of the major scale, which is the scale type, um, will typically be something like this. They'll say, okay, start at the root note. That's always where we start. And it says, jump up two notes, say so one, two. This note is in the scale. And then it will say, jump up another two notes, one, two. This note is also in the scale. We'll say, jump up one more note. Here we go. This note is also in the scale. So the notes that we jump past aren't in the scale, but the notes that we jump to are in the scale. So any of these notes on the keyboard could be the root note. So we could say instead of C major, we could say E major, or we could say G major, or we could say F sharp major. And the two different scale types that we're going to explore in this video are the major scale. So as we said, C major or the minor scale. So for example, F sharp minor. If we wanted to write a song in F sharp minor, which is a common key to write house music, tech house, techno, sort of dance music in, but we have no idea what notes are in that scale, the notes that we're allowed to use, all we have to do is Google it. It's as simple as that. So let's pop up to Google and let's say notes in F sharp minor piano. 
And let's have a look at that on the image search. Cool. F sharp minor scale. And here we go. These are the notes that we're allowed to use if we're writing in F sharp minor. So if we wanted to write a bass line, um, for example, then we're just going to use these notes. We're going to use F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D and E. So if we used a C, for example, that would be out of key and that wouldn't sound right. But as long as we stick to these notes, then we're going to be writing in key. And it's as simple as that. So now we know how to find out what notes are in a certain key. Now in a moment, I'm going to tell you how to pick a key, uh, depending on what type of music you're making, so that you have a little bit of an idea of what key you should be using. So then you can Google it and find the notes. But for now, I'm going to show you how you would use this actually inside a piece of software. So if you're using Ableton, that's great. But if you're using Logic, Cubase, whatever you might be using, that's absolutely fine. All of these pieces of software, whoops, will have this, which is called a piano roll, um, where you're going to be putting in your notes uh, to play bass lines, uh, to play samplers, synths, whatever. Um, so the way that we would do that is let's go back to those notes in F sharp minor. Now this is a little trick that I use inside Ableton. Um, so this trick uh, won't work uh, very well in Logic, Cubase or whatever, but it's a good uh, thing to have an understanding of. So uh, let's remember these notes. So it's F sharp, G sharp, A, B. And then let's come right down to the bottom of this piano roll down here. So what was that? F sharp, G sharp, uh, A and B and draw these notes in. Um, so I'm starting here because there wasn't, I wanted to start on F sharp and there isn't an F sharp down here. Um, so what was that? F sharp, G sharp, A, B. Let's get back to Google. Then C sharp, D, E, and then we're back to F sharp. So we don't need to put that in again. So C sharp, D, and E. Let's go back to Ableton. C sharp, and it tells you the notes just on the left-hand side here. C sharp, what's that? D and E. And E. Great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill out this piano roll with all of these MIDI notes um, that are in key, uh, leaving out the ones that are out of key. So as I said, if we were putting uh, C notes in here when we were writing a bass line, we'd be writing out of key. So we don't want to do that. Um, let's highlight these. I'm going to hold down Alt or Option and drag up. And that means that we're going to copy these uh, as opposed to just moving them. So I'm going to pop that. I drag so let's do that again. I dragged that from this F sharp and we're going to move it up to the next F sharp. So we're copying it up. So say hold down option, drag that up. And then we've copied that up again. Um, let's highlight all of those, drag this up. And I'm just going to expand this so that it covers the whole of this piano roll. There we go. So I've covered pretty much the whole piano roll. Uh, it doesn't matter about those really, really high notes and these really, really low notes because it's incredibly rare that you'll actually use those um, because they'll sound <laughs> just incredibly low or, or high. You very rarely use anything sort of below C0 or above sort of C6. Um, so this is going to cover everything that we want to use. Now, the trick here is we're going to use this button here called Fold. Now, what that does will hide all of the notes that don't have uh, a note on them, that don't have a MIDI note on them. So if we click fold, we now only see in here notes that are in the scale of F sharp minor. So um, this is awesome to have because any note that you put in here, wherever you're drawing notes, if you're making chords, uh, writing bass lines, writing melodies, any note that you put in here is going to be in key. It's impossible for them not to be in key because we don't have the option. If we unfold this, we could put notes in that are out of key, for example, but um, we don't want to do that. So if we keep that folded down, then all that we're presented with is notes that are in key. Um, another final point is that you need to move these notes off um, of the grids because at the moment, if we had like a piano sound loaded on here, and we played that, all of these notes would play at the same time, and that's going to be incredibly loud, and it's going to sound horrible. So what I did there is I uh, sort of click inside the MIDI clip here and select Command or Control A, and that's going to select all of these notes. And then I'm just going to press the left arrow key. 
So you see now that that's outside uh, of these notes uh, of this sort of uh, highlighted section here. So from here all the way down to here is what's actually going to play. So if we pop some notes in here, like these would play, but we're not going to hear these notes, um, but they still work for the sort of folded clips. So um, we're still only presented with the notes that are in key, but it's then impossible for us to write out of key. Now, the final thing that I would do here is I would right click on here and I would do rename and I would do F sharp minor. And then what I can do is inside Ableton Live, I can come down into where it says user library and clips um, and I could drag this into here. Now you can see that I've actually saved a few clips anyway, um, but that's going to save that as an ALC file, which is an Ableton Live clip. Uh, if we hit enter then, um, let's say I've made uh, a new MIDI track over here and I want to write in the same key. I can drag this over pop this on here and I've got that clip to start working with straight away. Um, I've actually saved uh, a load of these in, in different keys. Um, so go ahead and make those if you're, if you're working within Ableton. It's going to save you so much time uh, and you can use these in any project. So if I close down this project, opened up a new one in a week's time, they're all still going to be there for me to just uh, drag out. I've actually got this in my starting collection up here, key clips so that I can just drag these out and start working. So how do you know what key you should be using? Well, there's a couple of little guidelines that you can use to sort of judge this decision. Uh, first of all, um, the two most common types of key are major and minor keys. If we're talking about sort of Western music, um, America, UK, Europe, um, these are the most common uh, two keys that you're gonna be using, either major keys or minor keys, and that can be with any root note. So what are the differences between a major and a minor key? A major key tends to sound more uplifting, uh, happier, more upbeat, whereas minor keys uh, tend to be darker, moodier, um, and sort of more mysterious. Major keys are more commonly used in genres like pop, um, whereas minor keys are typically used in sort of more underground music like house, tech house, and techno for that sort of darker, moodier feeling. So if you're listening to someone like Ariana Grande on the radio, it's most likely going to be in a major key, like C major, um, G major, something like that. Whereas if you're listening to an underground techno record, it's most likely going to be in something like F sharp minor or A minor. As I say, these are just rules of thumb. That's not a hard and fast rule, um, but you need to be aware of the rules to, to go ahead and break them. So it's good to have an understanding of that, uh, but experiment and find what works best for you. So let's quickly summarize what we've gone over. So first of all, we learned that a key is a set of notes and chords that sound good together and give a certain flavor. Next, we learned that you can simply Google a key to find out what notes are in it and then just use those notes. Next up, if you're working in Ableton Live, you can use this MIDI clip uh, hack that I just showed you uh, in order to only be presented with the notes that are in key, so it's impossible to write out of key. Finally, we learned that minor keys tend to be dark and moody and mysterious, and that major keys tend to be happier, more uplifting, and more upbeat. So there we go, guys. I hope that's been helpful for you. And if you do have any more questions, then as I said at the start, the best place to get hold of me is in the Music Production Explained Facebook group, which there's a link in the description below to go ahead and check out. Uh, I'd really appreciate a like on this video if it has been helpful. And if you have any more videos that you want to see, any more topics that you'd like to see covered, then definitely, as I say, go into the Music Production Explained Facebook group and let me know in there and I can get that done for you. I hope to see you in another video soon. Take care.